Hello everyone. Welcome back. Hello everyone. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to see that how to perform slicing in NumPy arrays. Then we'll see view and copy functions. Then we'll perform the conditional selections on NumPy arrays. And at last, we'll see some mathematical operations on NumPy arrays. So let's get started. First of all, we'll start with the slicing and how we are going to uh, start slicing in our array. So for that, what we have to do, first we'll import our NumPy library. Then we will create we will create a uh, array. So for creating the array, what we are going to do, we'll create a random array. A random array starting from one, ending till five hundred, and I want thirty elements. And before this, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the seed function to settle my to settle my random integers so that it won't change each time when I'll execute the code. And then I'm going to use the reset function for resaving it into six rows and five columns now when i'll execute the code you will see a six rows and five columns array now we are going to perform slicing on it so what we are going to do we will first start the slicing from this three four one then we'll take this uh, uh, this whole row and then we'll take till four columns means we have to take four rows and four rows and five columns so i hope you have understood we have to take uh, we have to print or separate this much areas the areas which i have uh, which i have marked using the slicing option so for that what we can do we have to first uh, give the name of our variable in which we have uh, created our array and then we'll use the square braces and inside the square braces we are starting from the first means we are starting from the zero index in the row so we'll left that blank and we want till so this is the zero index and this is the one index this is the second index and this is the third index so we want till third index so we'll write here four then we will give comma and for the columns we want we want all the five columns so what we will do we will just leave it blank and then we will we'll execute the code you will see that it is printing till it is printing from 341 to 285 which we wanted now next function the next program we want to print from this 456 to this 217 so first of all we will create we will write like this and then we will count for the rows so it is 0 1 2 so it is in the second row so we'll write here Two. Then we want to print till uh, second. We want to print till the fourth line. That is the third index. So we'll give four here because we want till three. Then we'll give comma. Now we have settled for the rows. Now we have to give it for the columns. So for giving for the columns, what we'll do? We will again count. So this four, five, six is present at zero and first index. So we'll give first here means one here and then we have to print till this 217 so it is present at 0 1 2 3 so it is present at the third index will give 4 here and when we will execute the code you will see that 456 442 then 8 450 369 and 217 has been printed so this was the slicing now Now we'll see 
the view I will see the view and the copy functions so simply what we'll do we again import our numpy library as a alias name np then we'll create then we'll create an array and we'll store it in a So our array has been created till now. Now we are going to see the first we'll see the view function. So what the view function does. So for that we will create a variable named view and then And then we are, will do that. We'll print first. We'll print first view, and then we are going to print a. So you will see both the arrays are same, but when when we'll perform some changes to our view array. So what will happen? I'll show you. I want that the I'll give you a zero. So what I am doing here, I'll do what the number present at the third index to, uh, to till the fifth index will be changed to zero. So I am making is change. I am making these changes in the view array, but these changes will be performed in the main array also. That is the A array. So I'll show you. So I have make the changes into the view array, but when I'm printing the main array, that is the A array, the changes is performed into the A array also. So that is the disadvantage of the view that it is, it is directly connected to the main array. When we'll make changes to the view array, it will make changes to the main array. And when we'll make the changes to the main array, it will make the changes to the view array also. Now we will see the copy array so for creating the copy array we have to change the view with copy and then what we'll do we will perform the same thing in the copy array also we'll make it with uh, zero and then we are going to print then we'll print our copy array and we will print our main array also and when we'll, i'll execute the code you will see that the changes which we have made to the copy array these are not performed to the main array means what is happening here this copy function makes the copy of the main array and the actions which we are which we have updated in the copy array will not get affected in the main array and the actions which will perform in the main array will not affect in our copy array so these two arrays are totally different so i hope you have understood this now we'll move to the conditional selection the how we can perform conditional selection First, I'll write here conditional selection and again we'll import numpy as np and we'll create an array using the a range function.
now this is our array which we have created using the a range function the starting from 1 uh, going till 15 now what is conditional selection that we can select the elements of our uh, present in our array by giving condition to them so suppose i want to print the elements which are greater than 10 so what i will do i'll just use the greater sign and then i'll and then i'll write 10 and when i'll execute the code so you will see that it is giving all the values which are less than 10 are getting false and the values which are less than 10 are coming with true so you can see here now if you want to print the values uh, which are greater than 10 and else we don't want any values so we'll give it we'll write like this first we'll print our array and then inside our array using the square braces we'll give the condition inside the square braces and when we will execute the code you will see that all the elements greater than 10 that is 11 12 13 14 and 15 has been printed now suppose i want to print the elements which are even uh, in our array so first of all i'll print the main array so for the better understanding and then i'll print the the array which is in which the all it's in which the only even elements will be printed so for that what i'm going to do i'll just simply use the module operator and i'll give a modulus 2 and then equal to equal to 0 for the even and when i'll execute the code you will see at first our main array has been printed and then the all the even elements present in our main array has been printed so we can do same for the odd also you have to just give it not equal to zero and when we will execute the code you will see all the odd values has been printed so in this way we can perform the conditional selection we can use uh, different uh, operators for the conditional selection now we'll see that different mathematical operations that how many mathematical operations we can perform on one dimensional array and two dimensional array so first i'll write that mathematical operations So for performing the mathematical operations, first we'll import our NumPy library. Then I'll create a I'll create an array first. And I'm going to create it in a variable ARR. And I want to create it from 1 to 4. And then I'll print my error. Also, you will see an array has been created uh, from uh, 4 elements starting from 1 to 4. Now, if I want to perform some addition to all the elements with 2, so I'll just simply add 2 to our array. And when I'll execute the code, you will see that 2 has been added to each element so 2 has been added to 1 then it's been added to 2 then it's added to 3 and then it's added to 4 and the resulted elements has been printed so so on we can perform multiplication also so you can see here when i have multiplied 2 to the our array so each element present inside our array has been multiplied with 2 so we can perform the square also so we can use the exponential operator and then we'll give 2, write 2. So you will see the square of all the elements has been performed. We can do it for finding cube also, all the elements, and you will see that cube has been also printed. So in this way, you can perform mathematical operations to the 1D array. Now we'll see mathematical operation to the 2D arrays. 
so for that we have to create two arrays so i'll create two arrays one arr1 and the second one arr2 so first i'll write it and then the second one that is arr2 and i'll give it a range from 5 to 8 so for printing till 8 we'll write 9 and now we are going to print arr1 and arr2 both so you will see that our two arrays has been printed now what we'll do we will perform addition to both of our arrays so you will see that addition has been performed now what i will do i'll resave these two arrays as two dimensional now our two dimensional arrays has been created and now when i perform the addition so you will see that 5 has been added to the means the first element has been added to the first element and it becomes 6 then the second element is added with the second element of the uh, second matrix so it becomes 8 and so on it is performed so you can perform subtraction also so it will give the subtraction then you can perform division also then it will give so i have to perform division so you can perform division also it will give the division then you can give uh, perform multiplication also now when it is for the multiplication you will see it is di directly multiply uh, multiplying 5 with 1 6 with 2 and 7 with 3 and 8 with 4 so basically multiplication is in matrices multiplication is not performed like that in matrices the multiplication is performed like this the horizontal of the first matrix is get multiplied with the vertical of the second matrix means the one two will get multiplied with the five seven of the second matrix so for performing that original matrices multiplication uh, we have to use like this we have to perform arr1 dot and then inside the dot we will give arr2 and when we will multiply it now the original matrices multiplication has been performed so this was it for this video i hope you liked the video thanks for watching the video